Hey, we're live, everybody. Woo. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm in the bathroom. That's, well, you could be. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Frank and Ian with the TNT podcast episode 41. Um, I'm hosting it, so y'all probably aren't going to see this except for like on delay. Like, yeah. Whenever Ian gets it up on his stuff. Right. He's dog sitting for his parents again. Yeah, so you don't get any intro music either. Don't worry, I'll hum it. Do, 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 Well, I mean, I could just edit that in because, like, some people just do that and just have the Hangouts on Air logo while the music's playing, but that's intern work, right? We tried piping it in through wires into Ian's thing, and then he tried just holding the speaker up to the microphone, which did not work at all. It just hurt my ears. Yeah. And then he got it to work, but then he just was like... <laughs> yeah. So, I hate to deprive the viewers of Ian's face and all that. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. It, it, it would be ghetto anyways, so... Yes. Ghetto superstar. <laughs> That is what we have. So, what's going on, Ian? I have not talked to you in a week. Um, not much. Uh, um, dog sitting. Uh, mm-hmm. That's why I got these uh, these regular earbuds in. I, I brought my uh, my other headset with the the better mic on it, but uh, mm-hmm. I forgot I forgot the little adapter for this. Uh, or this battery thing because normally I would plug this into this headphone and mic splitter that goes into the headphone. I know you said you got one of these or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and but the only thing is, is I forgot the little adapter that goes to the quarter inch to the eighth inch, the regular size. It's this is like a large black man, and then this is like a small Asian woman. That's that's the problem. Won't fit. So, won't. Racist won't fit. Sexist, all won't see in. Boy, you're <laughs> all over the board tonight. Shit. It's that shit's true. It's true. Okay. So no, a lot of the times. So, so so some of the times. Part of the times. So, I don't know. So all the black on Asian porn you watch, huh? So what you getting at? <laughs> Actually, I haven't seen any of those. Black black on. That's what's funny. Yeah, there, there's a meme going around. It's like a really, really skinny white girl with all these black dudes around her, and it's like the white girl that says "me," and then the guys are like "bills, work, social life." <laughs> <laughs> so, um, where are we gonna? So, uh, what's Ian been up to project wise? You still working on your uh, flashy lights on your pewter? Uh. Let me see. What have I been working on? Uh, Last I remember, your apartment was in shambles. <laughs> no, I mean I got all that fixed. Uh, that I I got all that cable managed and stuff. That's nice uh-huh. and neat now. Yeah. Um, cool. And yeah, I was still working on some organizing and stuff. I was trying to download some more Porn. like programs and stuff for my. Or when I get my computer installed, because I'm just trying to go and download like the newest of each program I have on the computer, you know. Mm-hmm. And then have that have that ready, and then I'm I'm I still haven't gotten to trying to burn my uh, Windows thing using that Rufus or whatever on the thumb drive. Rufus. Yeah. I see. It, it's like the Windows. Uh, Media creation tool or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had that for uh, when I uh, installed this and then when I updated it. Yeah. Uh, but... Yeah, I, I got to play around with it because I have. Uh, I, I want to try to get like all my installs into one thumb drive into like a, a bootable menu or whatever. Yeah. But uh, it, it's. That's proven to be harder to do to combine because I want to have my 
XP seven and then a ten all on one thing, but it's proven to be hard. It looks like for to get the XP on there. Also, I might have to separate them onto the two different thumb drives. So they're like installed uh, discs, or are they like bootable uh, drives? Like, like just I'm or just or yeah, I'm just trying to get bootable. See, mm. You know, put the ISOs onto the thumb drive and make that bootable. You know, but because the the things are different, I I guess like I'm still trying to read up on the MBR versus UEFI and stuff, and mm -hmm. you know it's, the newer things have the UEFI, but right, that's like, only I like wouldn't. yeah. Hmm. So hmm. I might have to separate them. What I might do is just have one for the OS installs, and then have like the XP and then all my other utilities on that together or something, you know, and the drivers, I don't know. Cool. Yeah, that's like a whole project in itself, man. Just trying to research that stuff and figure out what I'm going to do. My, my original goal is just to get, I was just going to buy a 64 gig flash drive, but I bought because I, was researching and it seemed like it was going to be hard to get everything to be on there because uh, the UEFI has to be that fat 32, which mm -hmm. I think is can only be supported up to 32 gigs. So I, I bought two different things. I mean, I read you can maybe make a fat 32 partition on there and then have an NTFS partition at the same time on the thing, but I wasn't sure if that was going to work out. So I just bought two 32 gigs and, uh, Maybe if I play around with that on another self drive, maybe I'll get a large one and be able to get it. I, okay. I don't know. I'm trying to save my money, though, for this Ryzen shit. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like, every, every penny I'm trying to save for that, you know? Saving for Ryzen. Just like everybody was saving for Vega, which should be soon. Yeah. Um, are you, uh, holding out for Vega, uh, <laughs> or are you still, uh, pretty, uh, good with your, um, uh, pretty good. I haven't even used it yet. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to use it in my current computer until I can put together the Ryzen and then I'm going to rip that shit out and the SSD and put that into the Ryzen build then. Uh, cool. Did you hear, I don't know if Nate said, but he... Uh, I don't. He was on the show last time, but uh, I don't think he had it yet. He he recently he he got it finally. All hey, the parts for his. Gonna, he was gonna have to get a new rig because his died or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He he got it though. Uh, he was asking me, "Hey, can you help me uh, tonight or whatever?" And I was like, "Sorry, man. I'm over with my parents' dog sitting." I gave him a link to that. Uh, a beginner's guide from Jay's Two Cents that uh, he uh, put up lately. It's actually a lot easier than people would think. Yeah. Once you become accustomed with all the main components, it's just snapping shit together. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you, you could do it and you're blind. I can do it and I'm probably retarded. <laughs> oh, come on, man. I function hard, <laughs> you know. Well, the, the only thing that I make fun of you about is that you get so impatient or something with that you snap shit off. Well, I got the big fumbling hands, which Ben will argue that I won't, which, yes, I had smaller hands in high school 17 <laughs> fucking years ago. Well, you're, you're a, hey, you're a man, man. You work with cars and shit. I mean, what the fuck, right? You have big car man hands, right? That's what you're supposed to have. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I, I I don't have dainty little... To pluck anything, I got to use fucking tweezers. I can't... I use tweezers when I put the fucking... Uh, uh, the small... um Like the th parts that hung you up. The uh, the uh, little header port... Fucking... The, what are they called? The uh, Like UB USB header things? Yeah, so USB that, headers. Yeah. The, the hardest part that I have is... When you plug in like the LED light mm -hmm. indicator and then like the on and off switch for the computer, some 
because those are like color coded yeah, and shit. And then, like some have to be upside down, versus the other has to be facing another fucking way. No. And even if it makes sense in the manual, you're like, well, I gotta fucking remember to flip this. Ugh. Well, like, so some of those computers, like my, I think my recent motherboard came with like a little pin adapter that you plug all your lights and the on and off switch in. Mm -hmm. So then it's easier to manage when you go to actually plug it into the motherboard. <laughs> yeah, I saw some motherboards come with that where it's just a block, a block, and then you plug that in instead of each individual yeah. pin, which is retarded. Yeah. Uh, but that's why I, I'm, I, that's why I'm leaving everything in the fucking case. <laughs> not taking <laughs> yeah. that shit out. Uh, I'm probably, I, my first, Thing I'll probably buy will be a uh, Vega whenever, not right when it goes uh, live. It's supposed to be uh, Computex the uh, end of this month. They're gonna announce it, show it off in pricing, and then they're uh, gonna launch it. Uh, supposedly, the launch uh, might be, they might have limited run first because of a shortage of the memory. I think the 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 VRAM or whatever. Or something. Yeah. But, uh, everyone's like losing their shit over that. Oh, it's fucking bullshit. We wear this long. Dude, it'll be a couple fucking months. Big <laughs> fucking deal. Calm your tits. You're not going to buy it the day it launches any fucking way. So. I, I felt bad for Nate, though, because he had, I think he had like an $800 budget and he, on, he ends up only getting the, I don't know why, he could only get like the 1500X or whatever. Well, Fifteen if for, you know, for what for what it is, it's it's good. You know, they say it's like the best value because really you can overclock. It's like the FX chips where that you can overclock them and get decent performance. Are are all these chips just like you said? They're all the, made the same pretty much, and then I this underclock them or something. <laughs> yeah, the well, I know with the FX series, they were all basically the same chip. They were just set at different clock speeds from the factory. I don't know. Yeah. How the architecture is different for the uh, Ryzen uh, chips. I just know eventually I'll get one. Um, I, no. I'm still going back and forth. I, at first, I wanted to get myself a nice comfy chair with my uh, Christmas money next year. You know, if you spend a grand on a chair, that motherfucker better be comfortable. But I, yeah. I can't make myself spend a grand on a chair if I don't want to spend more than 400 on a desk. So... All right, and then look at what you pay for your keyboard, and you, even you're like, I'm not gonna pay that much for a chair. No, no, no. it was only a hundred bucks. Big fucking deal. Come here, <laughs> but uh, no, like, well, he hmm? he got he went to the dark side though. He got a 1060 though. Oh well, he couldn't wait for uh, Vega. A lot of people couldn't. And there's a shit ton of yeah. posts on the. Uh, subreddits. Oh, fuck it. I couldn't wait. And I just got, okay, you just got a, you know, car that you're going to fucking return when they announce that it beats it. You know? Right. So just calm the fuck down. What do you really got to play that bad? Just don't watch the fucking Let's Plays and you won't get any spoilers. <laughs> right. I don't, I don't see what the problem is. But, but, uh, yeah, I mean, my main thing is I want a shit ton of monitors. My main thing is I'm limited to the three ports i have now so i was thinking about it you know eventually just when i get my desk buying the monitors and then um maybe hook one or two up to my uh old uh uh xp machine but i don't know maybe just to have the lights on yeah i've been meaning to since i've been working on the xp machine since they released Microsoft released that uh that unconventional I guess uh patch for that WannaCry yeah. ransomware, I've been meaning to download that, or I've I downloaded it, I've been meaning to install it. You're gonna you're gonna fucking host the show and come on and be like, we have all your files. Send us three thousand dollars of bitcoins. Fuck. What do what? you do if if like if you're if you're using say an old XP machine that you don't care about, and that happens? Can you just like for, re for, like format your fucking drive and say fuck them? I don't. Well, the thing that's scary about that is if you have that XP machine on your 
network, but you do have the same computers that you, on that network that you do care about. That shit can. They said that shit can spread onto the network pretty fast. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. My uh, I haven't dealt with uh, haven't well, I haven't had to do networking in years. My uh, college they had computers on network and they got worms all the time. And those had XP and Vista fucking machines. I'm like, what the hell are they getting? But, you know, somebody on the computer looking at, apparently looking at porn. You'd think they have filters, but we had a, a some, the, the teacher said that somebody got on the computer, looked up porn, and looked up so much that they had to enter their credit card number. And they said, we gave a good warning. We said, next time this happens, we'll use that credit card number to order pizza for the entire class. Um, <laughs> I figured they'd have a filter in place to prevent you from going to sites like that, but I guess not. Right. They offered IT and networking as a class, which I should have fucking took then, but I didn't know no better. But well, um, the, th the reason people get so much viruses from porn be is because they don't just go to like a mainstream site and just have that bookmark and just go to that, like the porn hub or s some shit, you know? They must be going to like every random porn website on the internet or something. They click yeah. on those pop ups that come up, which yeah. Oh, well, this came up and interrupted my browsing. Maybe they want to give me something good. <laughs> Fucking idiot! I knew a guy who had every computer. He as soon as he said he went to a porn site, they crashed, got a virus, and he had to take them all to Geek Squad, which his wife fucking paid for because you know she she had money. He had a little netbook, and even it had a fucking virus. I'm like. Dude, get a Mac or something. If all you're going to do is get porn, get a little Mac or fucking Android, and no one will be any of the fucking wiser. But Yeah, that's that's all I do is, you know, I, I just watch porn on my tablet. I mean, it's, you can take the tablet to bed with you, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Speaking of taking it to the bed with you, that dude, Zeus, he has little how-tos and stuff that he does around his house, and he got a fucking monitor mounted above his bed like there's a shelf right above his uh pillow yeah and he, he mounted a magnet to the fucking back of a well the back of it and there's a steel plate on the back of his monitor and the magnet i don't care if it's neodymium it just holds onto it by magnet no clips or nothing he's like yeah this is strong i just lay here and watch tv i go nah 27 inch monitor <laughs> nah I don't want that falling on my face. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like to do something like that with the tablet, but I mean, no, this I'd is have a, to this is a make a monitor. case for it. Yeah. I, uh, well, if you do that shit, you might as well just get the vase amount for it. You know what I mean? Well, he takes it and he puts it like on the side so he can watch it next to his pillow and then he gets it up. And, I mean, if he wants a tablet, but they don't make a tablet that fucking big because he's got a laptop. It just runs to that. But, right, but uh, what? Yeah, it's I like you have to triple monitor set up with, right? In your bed, you know that'd be funny. I uh, what have I been up to? You ask. Well, yeah, yeah, sure. We'll we'll ask that. We'll, we'll <laughs> pretend we asked that. Yeah. But I, no, uh, what? What you been up to? Because I haven't heard from you for a while. been quiet. Yes. Well, um, did, had I been to the dentist when I uh talked to you guys last? Yeah, you, were men man, you mentioned Dennis shit, so yeah. yeah. I had to go to, I got my uh, upper uh, deep cleaning, which was horrible. And um, uh, lots of work, 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 work. Um, what did I, I did something. Well, anyway. <laughs> Mostly just a lot of work, and then I get home, and I, I don't even have time. I haven't even practiced my guitar since the last show. I I told myself, I'm going to get, uh, like, <laughs> I told my wife, I'm going to, you know, go work out, go out to breakfast. It's going to be fun. We're going to spend the whole together. Okay. And I wake up at, like, 7 o'clock. I go, oh, she got up and went downstairs. Okay. And I fall back asleep, and I wake up. It's fucking 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, shit, the day's over. Yeah. And I can't that's, get out of bed. That's what I see a lot on like my uh like the forums for like like three D artists or animation stuff is like how do you how do you even start like a freelance business uh 
how do you get that off the ground when you're you have to pay the bills and stuff like how do you make that transition that must be like really rough man uh you don't sleep yeah um i mean like i can understand it if you're motivated like i have i'm creative i can do things but the, the thing is i don't it's not that light motivation it's just i'm so tired <laughs> like if you don't sleep but you have this shit in your head there's sometimes i get stuff in my head that i have to do something about it and put it on like like i have to type something up or make a recording right. uh, or draw something while i'm thinking of it. I'm like this is fucking brilliant and i put it up on like instagram or you know facebook or something uh but you know you have to be consumed but it uh to paraphrase uh uh, Kenneth Howard, uh, Von Dutch. Um, if it does not become the most important thing in your life, you're not going to do it. All right. That's true. You can't, you, you can take a hobby if you're good enough at it, but practice, practice, practice. Uh, you can, you know, turn it into a job if you make enough money at it. But if you just have natural talent, you know, and you just flip it, start like that, you know. But if you're, I'm I'm what do they call that? Uh, mediocre at pretty much everything I get started at, and finding focus. You you think it would help because I could do so many different things kind of equally as well, but I can't channel that energy or whatever into one outlet. I, right. don't, know, I don't know where to go. I uh, so that's a uh, which you know it helps to get on. A lot of the times I'll be at work and say, like, at lunchtime, I'll get on Instagram or Facebook and I'll see all my – surround yourself by artistic people if you really want to do anything creative because you'll see all kinds of shit. You'll go, man, I should do that or I should do something like that. And, you know, and not just steal it. You you know can put up and say, I was inspired by this guy's idea or, you know, I decided to try it myself and – you know, you never know. I mean, I didn't, I never thought as an old car guy, I never thought I would pinstripe. And I had friends that are like, it's not that fucking hard. And I'm like, mm. and I, yes and no. <laughs> um, but I have fun doing everything I do. I'm just, you know. Can you learn pinstriping? Like, it's just like, you know, like, a, I guess that's a question. Like, it, can you learn to draw if you're not good at it? Uh, well, once again, like Von Dutch said, if you have no talent, if you, you know, you, you really should be able to draw to begin with, um, at least be able to do that. Um, but if you can't, you might be able to overcome it with endless practice, but you know, it's a hurdle. Um, I had a buddy yeah. who, uh, you know, he can pinstripe. He did it a little bit after I started, but I didn't do it as often as he did. He does every night before he goes to bed. And he can do, uh, he can just whip out a freehanded drawing or freehanded uh, piece better than I can. But his lettering is terrible because he doesn't practice. And every time he does, he'll try, he'll say he's going to, you know, do it, but he'll do a little bit and he gets enough negative comments to where he goes, I'm going to throw the shit away and just, you know, give it up. No, you you got you got to take the good and the fucking bad, and uh, you know you, criticism sucks because people will you know it hurts, but you can see your own mistakes and you want to try that much harder. Yeah, and um, with any outlet, you know, with music or guitar, or even technology, with building a computer, you know, I. I never even thought about doing it. You know, I, I had installed Windows was about the extent of my computer abilities, you know, when I built this thing. And then, I, like I said, I saw the uh, a Let's Play for Fallout 4, and I said, I want to fucking play that. But fuck an Xbox and fuck a PlayStation. If I'm going to buy, because I, you know, I had the little iMac. I was like, eh, I don't want to get, you know. A yeah, game station when I need to buy a new computer anyway. So, right. But, yeah, uh, I I just I don't no I I kind of transitioned over the years where I uh, I used to feel more like talent was like more of like a God given 
thing that you were meant to do, you know? <laughs> Some people are like that. Some people, you hear them sing, you go, that's what that fucker was put here to do. Right. You know? Like Freddie Mercury, you cannot tell me you hear his voice and think he was meant to do anything else. <laughs> right? Right. Um, you know, you hear Jimi Hendrix or Steve Ray Vaughan play guitar and you're like, he should never have to do anything else. That's it. Um, yeah. You know, uh, some actors are like that. I watched Brian Cranston, you know, on television doing an interview, and I'm like, that motherfucker, he's an artist. Yeah. You know, and, you know, sometimes there's got to give him talent. Uh, there's stuff I've always liked to do since I was a little kid, like uh, drawing, writing. Um, I've enjoyed music. I was ne I never thought I was any good at it when I was a kid, so I'd pay enough attention in class to... Uh, learn it just to you know get through the class the whatever and i never kept it in my brain and then later as an adult i'm watching like youtube tutorials and little fucking videos that we would have watched in fifth grade to actually read sheet music a lot of the stuff i've taught myself on piano i actually learned from trying to read sheet music and try to get better at it um because i know the notes now it's just the process of being able to read it fluently. Yeah. So. Well, for some people, it, it depends because, like, some people are more, like, left brain or whatever, and and you get into, like, the physical hurdles that you have to overcome. Like, some people can't really draw because their hands are too shaky or something. Right. You know? Right. Um, but, well, like... Oh, go ahead. I was like, yeah, or, you know, your eyes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but like I, I overcome those. Those were just, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I guess because I, I still had some sight. I, I like, I was able to see beautiful things, and I wanted to be able to do those, those things, you know. Mm -hmm. So it just takes, unfortunately, it just takes me longer because I have to get up closer to things, and, right. you know, like I have, it just takes time for me to do it, you know. Yeah. I've been what? uh I've been reading a lot. I I get a book and it turns out it's always a fucking trilogy. I get a book and I go and then what happened? Oh fuck, I got to buy two more books now. <laughs> yeah. So but that's what? another thing I want to do is start writing. Right. Well like writing might be a, a thing that like a lot of people could probably do. You don't need a lot of uh, high tech stuff. They say actually the writing programs simulate like DOS or something. Yeah. You know, just distra all distractions are gone. You're not going to go and then I and then pull up a fucking YouTube video and watch it for 20 minutes and then you got to go do something else. No, you just type um, and, uh, you know. Yeah. But I, uh, make, make no mistake about it though. Like for people that do, it does come easy for like they. You really do have to give yourself up to that stuff, and it it takes time. Like mm -hmm. Nate, Nate wishes he knew how to do the three D modeling stuff that I know how to do. But like I told him, I he he didn't go to college or anything. But I, I told him I went to college for four years, and then I I pretty much like continue to self teach my uh, self all that stuff. And like I just was so passionate about it. Like every day I would be like working on stuff, you know, just because I liked it so much. So like. You really have to like it, love it, really, and mm -hmm. g get, give your whole self to it pretty much where it's, like, a part of you then, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so like, like, I took, you know, guitar. For, I took the lessons all the way through high school, and, you know, there's only so far uh, an instructor can teach you. They can say, here's everything you need. <laughs> Go the fuck on, you know, and... You either, you know, get better on your own or you don't. Yeah. Hey, you're right I, there. Yeah. I, I think that's probably like the main thing is that you really got just got to find something that you really like, and that's what's probably gonna push you. You know. Mm-hmm. Yes, but sir. I'm um, gonna try to close this window so it's like the train. Now. Yeah. Speaking of uh, technology, sir, are, 
Yeah. Would you like to look at some battle stations? Yeah, sure. I, I think I found some interesting ones, I guess. Uh, you and I both uh, picked uh, one of the same ones. So. Uh, you, you picked out. It, it was my turn this week, so I, uh, well, I that's why I had to look them up. Oh, okay. I, I grabbed some anyway, but. Uh, was it the yellow one? Uh, no. Oh, okay. No. But. Do uh, you want to start? With okay, that? let's. Yeah, but I'll, you can start screen sharing, but I'll, I'll try to remember to tell you to switch it back, I guess. All right, hold on. <coughs> okay. So here we have fucking goddamn Wolverine. <laughs> yeah. Da -da 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 um, yeah. Whoop. I do have to admit, like, it seems like DC is like they've held more towards the actual colors of the characters, whereas Marvel it seems like they just like go everything is black now, you know? Yeah, it, like black or red, like fucking you know, computer setups nowadays. Yeah, I mean, like. They because that was like a deleted scene was Wolverine with the yellow suit. He's like, yellow fucking suit? And stuffs it back in the suitcase. Okay. I mean, Deadpool, he, he looks just like the character, but that's, once again, black and red. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's, uh, I mean, I don't know. DC, though, I, their movies, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gonna see that Wonder Woman? No. Nose. No, I'm not nothing against women. I love women. I think women should have the power to be superheroes or any of that shit they want. It's awesome. Nothing sexist at all. But I have no interest in it. I tried. My wife isn't a big uh, Wonder Woman fan either. So I we saw the commercials and she was asking me questions. And I said, "Well, I said what well, little bit of the mythos that I knew," and I started making her make a face like, "What?" So, I just yeah. uh, I ended up um, just uh, I googled it, and not only did the the uh, origin story change after a certain generation of stories, but it was so convoluted and full of shit that fuck it, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, but <laughs> I I do have a great like I've been watching and giving that Supergirl show a chance for a couple seasons, so. Uh -huh. Uh, like, is she the one with the outfit with the boobs, or is that no? One, that's Wonder Girl or whatever the fuck she is, right? I can't yeah, remember. Wonder Woman is the one with the no, 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 no. The metal. No, she's got a cape and a white outfit, and she's blonde, and she's got big boobs. Uh, no, that's not her. the the Supergirl. She has like a a red like it's like just like a dress, and then the it looks like a regular Superman. Types top, you know. Uh huh. Well. What? Now, now I'm now I'm mad at myself. I can't think of this uh, heifer's name. Uh. <laughs> but now I was gonna say, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try not to spoil it. But like, uh, so like the latest thing was Superman, was like, he was like put under mind control, and so he's forced to fight Superwoman, and. I'm I'm not gonna say who won just because I I probably shouldn't spoil it, but I'm I'm just gonna say it it was on her show, so <laughs> Oh uh <gotcha. laughs> I I mean I, I don't wanna be like I mean like I'm not a sexist person but like I don't know like it it it'd be like if Wonder Woman if they made made like a Wonder Man character and then they they had them fight, and then they had a, a different outcome than you would probably want. You know, I would feel the same way about that because Wonder Woman was, uh, she was like the original character, you know? She's been, I don't know. <laughs> uh -huh. Gotcha. Well. I mean, it would just be stupid. If, if there's a character named Wonder Man, he beats Wonder Woman, that'd be like... What is that stuff? You know, I've been I'm a diehard Wonder Woman fan, you know. 
Oh, it was Power Girl I was thinking of. Okay. Uh. Yeah, I never fucking heard of her. I just kept seeing, like, girls dress as her for cosplay and stuff. Yeah. But, anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> I, but we're getting way yeah. off track. Well, we're, uh. we're on topic with this uh, thing here. I... Yeah. My, my only statement is I like uh, I watched the Deadpool movie. I like uh, you know Watchmen obviously, and uh, I like I love Guardians of the Galaxy. I saw the second one, and then I found out they're gonna be in the new Avengers movie. Which fuck now? There's another movie I gotta watch. Yeah, did you get to see the Guardians movie? Yeah, I saw the second one. And I'm like the only one that I haven't gotten to see it yet. Oh, I think it was better than the first. Uh, it was a fucking great movie. It was hilarious and very original. It had me laughing. It had me crying. It had everything. So nice. But uh, anyway, I'm not gonna spoil anything for you. You gotta check it out. Um, yeah, I, I think. I mean, I think it's pretty neat set up. I mean, like even if you're not like into that bright of colors, you could at least say that it's definitely very well match yeah, he he went uh you know he had a theme uh i'd like to know where he got these little risers with the wolverine claws on them yeah um and what what is that on the i know that's a coaster on the left what's that on the right um a phone is, is that his dock for like his phone probably let me look let me zoom in i think that's what it is yeah i think so and like i kind of like he continued the theme like he's got the slate looking uh countertop here for the desk and then he's got a slate skin on his ps4 so he's yeah. carrying he's carrying a theme um and then he uh, is that his workout stuff over here on the side <laughs> maybe he he's like yeah, yeah and the, after i watch a guy who's ripped i get ripped <laughs> so yeah it, it, it's cool uh you know he well, it could be worse. He could be having like, like a slice of pizza on the weights or something. <laughs> Maybe like Doug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is cool. And then um, we also got you uh, have this here that I saw this yeah. and I thought about uh, uh, using it, but then I was like, eh, I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah, that's sort of why I chose it. So he's got a, a shit ton of pop figures here. Yeah. He's got an Xbox and a PlayStation right here. Um, yeah. And I guess, is what the hell is this thing above the PS4? Captain America. What is that? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. It looks a little older. Yeah. So I'll have to look in the, uh, in the in his comments and see what the hell it actually is. Uh, but he's got a TV, a little fucking, like a webcam here. That's a security yeah. camera, I guess. I like yeah. his, I'm, I'm assuming these are 3D printed. I like these uh, flash drive holders and SD card holders. Yeah, I plan on making that type of thing. That's cool. I, I like those. I don't know what you, I guess you just type in whatever. And like a skull for his pens, that's cool. And I mean, yeah. His TV here is just an insignia. Isn't that like just a Walmart brand? Yeah, actually, uh, I asked the, one of the Best Buy guys about that before when I was trying to look uh, for a TV before I bought my older TV, which was an LG. Uh -huh. He said that the manuf it's like the same actual manufacturer that does the LG and then insignia. Oh. So, uh, I mean, you'd get comparable quality. Now, see, he's got a bunch of crap going on here. There's this tower in the corner. Uh, he's got multiple Xbox controllers, one PlayStation controller. Yep. A USB sound card, it looks like. Uh, yeah, what, what do you think about those? Is is that, is that like, just as good as having, like, a, a USB uh, video card or whatever? Oh, what, an external sound card? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much just like a well, amp or like a DAC or something. I don't well, know. The, the reason for an amp or DAC is because A, onboard sound cards are usually shit. And, yeah. and B, because there's electrical components inside of your uh, computer that can affect the uh, 
audio, whereas if you do it externally on a USB, it's considered more separated and more free from that. Um, I personally, I mean, I'm just dipping my toes into the whole audiophile thing, so I'm looking at getting a DAC amp set up. Uh, I don't think I, per for my needs, I personally wouldn't need something like this, because a lot of guys who do the mixing and recording and shit, they get, you know, the crazier ones. Yeah. Um, I I think I I think mine is technically an amp because I have uh, there it's a, like a headphone splitter where it has like volume knobs for each headphone output. So I I guess it would technically be like an amplifier. Might be a preamp if if, if not. I mean, uh, then he's got his little collar and a uh, uh, paw print for his poor passed away puppy. That's sad but cute. Yeah. Um, he's got a iPad with a Bluetooth keyboard, and then he's got his real keyboard. And then moving over here, we got a 3D printed uh, Pokemon ball. Little Zelda thing here. Must have been watching some Jerry. <laughs> uh, well, it looks like he's a little maker because his desk is all ate up from doing little shit around it. And he's got the little Fiskars cut mat here and a yeah, actually, in a couple of weeks, I was gonna, uh, me and my dad were gonna go up to Lowe's and uh, we we're gonna get an eight by four pegboard, and I was gonna, they wanted the pegboard too, so we were gonna have them cut it out Lowe's, so we each get a four by four pegboard, and I was gonna hang that up above my three D printer, so I could have like, hang up all my three D printing film in and all my different oh. tools and stuff. So well, the uh. My garage, I told you, we just finished recently uh, adding on to it. And um, yeah. I uh, I have a pegboard that we installed on the, on the wall. Uh, and I have a couple pegs. I need to get more. I, I'm Actually, I plan on going to the swap meet this weekend. Now that I think about it. Uh, and guys will sell their old shit in bins for literally like a quarter. Just get rid yeah. of it. So I can get right. some old pegs and hang them on there. I should have bought some last time, but I was on the way out. Um. How did you mount that on there? Did you uh, did you have to use some like risers to have it be like far away so from the wall a little bit so you could actually no mount the pegs in there somehow? Well, no, we got a um, there uh, there's it's the garage is uh, doesn't have interior walls like well it's got you know what do they call that uh, particle board and then the inside there are the studs right and we just mounted it so the corners are on the studs. And uh, okay, but at the time, we I had my dad come over with the you know a drill because I wanted to you know screw the uh, corners in and I didn't want to you know hand do it. But he comes in with the fucking the worst drill I'd ever seen. <laughs> I mean, his the bits didn't fit any of the screws, so they just went zoom, zoom. So he literally took a hammer and just hammered them in. I said, Well, fuck it, I could have done that. So, yeah, I mean, they're you know, it's not pretty, but it's a maker area. Like, it's got spray paint on it where I painted stuff and glue and shit. And I got a bench uh, right behind my wife's car. My my father in law, when they put built built it, they made a, a bench and then they tore it down. They put it on the other side because we decided to store my Chevy on that side. But anyway, yeah, that's I might do that for uh, on a future uh, episode. Do I'll try to look up uh, maker setups. But, or some uh, shit. but the thing is, um, my uh, well, that's probably a, a thing on Reddit. There's probably a whole su there's a subreddit for desk corners. Yeah, and I subscribe to that because I'm that kind of loser. Um, but no, anyway, <laughs> I was saying I got a, a bitch there, so I I was going to move all my painting stuff in there. I moved my toolbox in there already, and uh, recently at work, the the chair I've been using, I've been at my my job. Uh, the other day was my anniversary. I've been there since '06. And uh, I've had a, a chair in that area for not quite 10 years, but pretty close. And um, I, I literally found it. They were going to throw it away. And I said, well, I'll take it. I took this chair and I used it for the longest time. And then the other day, a guy said, hey, we're I just got a new chair. So we're throwing away our old ones here. We'll give them to you. And they try to throw my chair out. And I said, no, no, no. I, res 
I rescued this from the trash. <laughs> oh, Sorry. Sorry. So, uh, so I put a note on it. No, I'm taking this home. And at the end of the day, my wife came and we threw it in the car. And I took it home. And it's like I said, it, to me, it feels brand new. It doesn't look like it's, you know, tore up or anything. That, so I took it home and it weighs a ton. I got out of the car and I found out it's a, uh, it's a, uh, what the fuck's that brand? Uh, steel case. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's a name brand. So that's a pretty expensive chair. So I got it, you know. Yeah. I rescued it from the tr trash twice. <laughs> nice. I think that's, I think that's romantic. It's like an old friend. Yeah. I get I get to keep it. I've had I've had that thing longer than I've I've, I've had that chair longer than I've had my wife. <laughs> so yeah, but you know, and it's nice to have it in a little maker area where I can hopefully turn it into an artist studio at some point. Um, yeah. This guy's got his little space. He's got his things he likes. It's not the neatest, but it's cool. Yeah. I uh, I wanted to read the comments and see if uh, someone says, what the fuck is that? Excuse me. Uh, some people, they, they, they can't function in, like, a really simplified set. You know, you have to, like, they need stuff everywhere that they can get to easy, you know? Hmm. Funko Pops. Trying to find out what that damn uh I bet you Doug would like that setup. <laughs> no, because it's got an Xbox. He go blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He, Oh, that's right. He hates Funkos, doesn't he? Yeah. He'd probably call him a weeb or something. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. <laughs> One guy said there's too much clutter. Yeah. But uh okay, now um the one that I said that you had that I had too. It was like the attic one. This guy here. Yeah. The IKEA Master Race. <laughs> <laughs> Phew, click on it here. Yeah, he's got the acoustic foam on the on the wall that's not doing a goddamn thing except looking pretty. Yeah. Well, that's that's like that's similar to the one that I have on my wall. So my, mine's like a brighter red, and then it's black. <clears throat> and then he's got, he's got the banana hanger uh, headphone hangers. Yeah, I saw that in a uh, on that Gamer Ranks channel. That was like one of the unconventional, like, uh, PC accessories tip. It was like they had that, and then they had those, uh, you know, like the five and a quarter inch bay drawers that you could use for storage. Oh shit! I didn't even realize he's got a blue blue yeti microphone, but unless he's just storing that, it that way, he's using it wrong. You got to stand it up straight. You don't talk into the head. You you don't because I see a lot of people do it that way. They they're doing it wrong. Not you don't do that on a blue yeti. Oh, uh, well, I just meant in general. I don't, I don't know okay. about the blue uh, yeti. Mixer mics, you can, um, but it, it's a side. Uh, Whatever my, I I corrected a guy and he said, "Are you sure?" I thought I heard you're supposed to begin from the top, so I gave him a link from fucking Blue's website, where they said, "No, that you're not." But uh, yeah, this guy's yeah. got a. Uh, looks like he's got the you know larger Carl B countertop with uh I think he said I think I remember him saying it was a gallant, uh, frame or whatever I can't remember how to look. Was it Alex? And then over on this side, his actual the actual computer space isn't that big, really. Yeah, like it's, it's all like for the TV, which is stupid because he's got a he's over the other side. See, he's got this big ass. Our sectional has a like a, a built-in thing for your feet to lay instead of an ottoman like that. Right, but. uh And then he's got this little corner. He's like, wasted space. Oh, I'm like, you could do something there, dude. Yeah. Put a fucking chair. Negative space. Like, just put, like, something there where you can lay back and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Not wasted space. Just ain't put an air mattress there yet. <laughs> uh. 
But uh, yeah, I like the you know the giant IKEA desk. That's actually kind of what I want. I really want a big ass, too fucking big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I hate. I, I don't know how people get get by like on those two by three foot desks. That you would fit in like a corner somewhere, you know. Uh, this is uh about four feet wide. So yeah. Um, but the thing about the Carlby countertops is they're narrower than an actual desk. They're like twenty five, twenty six inches, and they say some guys say they miss it. I I I personally don't have the room, so uh, uh oh, uh oh. I marked it as something outside. I saw somebody uh, shared on YouTube their cat that, like, they say, say hi, and he goes, meow, meow. He's got a deep voice that doesn't sound meow. like a cat. He sounds like a guy, meow. Seriously, meow. that low. Meow. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, that's cool. Yeah. But, so, uh, uh, do you think, what would you, you want to start on the rating of these? Um, Sure. So we got, oh, that's that's the same one, just bigger pictures. Um, I like his dog. Hi, dog. Oh. So we got the Pop Station. We got the Wolverine Station. Yep. And then we got the IKEA uh, Master Race. Yeah. I'm gonna say this one's my top, because it's a loft. There's room to chill and watch TV. And you know, I wouldn't have. I don't know if I'd put the... I wouldn't have put the TV there. I would have found a better spot. Like, mm. I would have used the, that space for my computer and have an epic desk set up and then, you know... Because you could put the fucking TV there. Yeah. You don't need, what, eight feet of fucking desk for a 43-inch TV. So, right. But, well, uh, I kind of lean more towards the Wolverine station just because it's... It seems like it's like really clean, you know. Whoa, okay. Uh, and just like it's it's very well put source. together. It's tech source. He probably just built it and then just leaves it in a room he doesn't actually use. Um, well, I guess since we're divided, what uh, what were the votes on it? Did the yours get more votes then? Um. Uh, this one has mine has five hundred seventy five. Uh, currently, this one has 30 upvotes. Oh, dang. And then the other one has 243. So, apparently, everyone agrees with me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they go Ikea, well, uh, Pops, and then the other one. Uh, well, uh, was it, would this, uh, this one here be your second one, then? Yes, 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 okay. exactly. I, I I could live in this space. The The Wolverine one seems too too sterile. Oh, okay. To me. I, and, like... I could get that. I don't know. It's too sterile, and I understand some people, like, popping yellow, but after a while, my eyes would hurt seeing all that yellow. <laughs> so... Yeah. I'm, well, I mean... And when plus, you're looking at a monitor, you you really need it's best to have like neutral colors by you, you know. Well, like you know, you you would like it because of all the neon and shit. I I, I, <laughs> I I'm I'm more of a, a plain guy. I have a couple you know lights. My keyboard it it turns off and it's just a black keyboard. So yeah, you know I I don't I I, I don't I don't show all that much stuff. I uh, but yeah, that that's the way I would go. Uh, it looks like. They tell you though, it looks like uh, he is the winner by uh by the Reddit. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah. Yep. Still five hundred seventy-seven. So he got two more while we were talking about him. So, oh, that's fine. I mean, we could go by that because there's there's no time. I mean, that, that's a good way because of, yeah, there's no tiebreaker. So this is the uh, I think his username is uh, Chris D Tryon. You uh, you have won yeah. the internet, sir. Um, I also <laughs> had a uh, a couple for me if you wanna if you would like to see. Oh sure, why not? But now I only have two, so it's gonna be shorter. <laughs> I have uh this guy here. Load up. 
it's a sit stand desk. Okay. With uh, he's got a little Apple uh keyboard, I'm assuming, and an Apple uh, trackpad here. Um. Yeah. What what were we saying? Like, was it like Nate or something was saying that those suck or something? Who? Or like they're too expensive? What? Who was saying that? I forget. Was it was it Nate we were talking about that? Because it's like, I mean, you could always buy the frame or whatever, but then all you have to do for the top is pretty much just use like a board of wood, pretty much if you wanted to. Yeah, I mean, it's whatever you want. Um, I personally, I personally wouldn't do a sit stand because I'm too. I understand if you're there for eight hours, you want to be able to get up and move around. I'm not standing at my desk. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I do, I do it at work. I hate it. They made my desk narrower so that I can't put stuff on top of it. But the thing is, I check in boxes all day, so I have to sit the box down. The box does not fit on the fucking desk anymore. So the box is on the floor. So I have to lean, I have to bend my ass down onto the floor because they don't want me sitting at a fucking desk. Fuck that. So if I'm at a desk, I'm sitting the fuck down. So right. I can understand it. If it's if you're at home and that's all you do, it looks like he has a Mac Pro, by the way. The trash yeah. cam. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's not the best lit, but I, I, I enjoy this one. Uh, someone asked him, what kind of monitors are those? And he's like, they're 27-ish monitors I had laying around. He's like, some AOCs or whatever, nothing fancy. So, you know, yeah. I just like, I well, always like the idea of the portrait and landscape monitors. Right. Um, it's, you know, it's quiet. It looks nice. It's, you know, not a lot of flash here. His the lights are on the sit stand actual station itself. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. What got I set over here? It's I will say, like those those d desks could be nice. Like if you need to, if you like want to get out like at the perfect uh, height for you, because uh, I know like my uh, work desk, which is glass, and then my corner glass desk are at a little bit different heights and. I like my corner desk is at a better height than my work desk. So sometimes I wish I could lower my work desk a little bit, you know. Gotcha. But, uh, yeah, go on, sir. And then my second station is a very similar setup. This guy's got the slanted roof here, and he's got an Ikea countertop. And, oh, my God, what's this? He custom built this cabinet here, which uh, stores um, a bunch of shit. Blow this up for you here. <laughs> you got a Yamaha shit here, uh, YDG, whatever, graphic equalizer, stereo mono crossover from Samsung. Uh, mm. I is that a flirt? I don't think so. All his networking gear is in here, and this little lockbox he's got inside of it. Well. Server uh, rack daily. Uh, I can't remember what he said this goes for. When I did the link, it only sent the imager, it didn't send the Reddit thing. Custom made cabinet, 19 inch audio rack, and cable distribution. Uh, you can switch all his components, including lights, with the power strip. Uh, line decor and weather, ser weather station server. Nice. And then he's got. Everyone likes this little clock here. Um, uh, those things are actually kind of expensive. You can buy a kit for like a hundred bucks, but if you can't solder, you're you know kind of fucked. He's got a wood uh, headphone stand, which I think is cool. Yeah. Uh, a lot. Actually, in this picture, some people were like, "If the wire just wasn't there, it'd be so much better." <laughs> like, fuck you, guy. Go build the shit your damn self. Yeah, yeah. I had I had an idea to print out uh, a headphone holder uh, when I start doing the three D printing stuff. Uh, I was just gonna try to do like uh, like a water, like a fluid simulation in my three D program, and then I was gonna try to uh, have it be like a fountain and made it look make like the like liquid look like it's suspending the headphones. Mm. I think that would be pretty cool. Hey, why not? Who else would have it? Yeah, it'd be pretty unique, I think. 
He's got he's got the Bear Dynamic headphones. He's yeah, got, what is that Bear Dynamic? Is that like a type of audio, or is that that uh, just a brand? It's a brand. Oh, okay. Um, kind of expensive. Uh, they make monitors. Um, they can they make different kinds of uh, headphones that can be either a, a semi open, closed, or open. Uh, depending on which model you get, they have velour uh, pads, which are kind of. He's got the audio or the ice uh, I, uh, the uh, isoacoustic isolators under his speakers here, which these alone are a hundred bucks, uh, and they just separate the speaker from the desk. So when the speaker has bass, it doesn't rattle the fucking desk. Right. Uh, it looks like he's got a Razer keyboard. His phone and huh. his switches for the lights, which oh, that's better than having it on directly on a desk, though. Like you said, you hate when people do that. Well, I hate when they put their sub on the desk because that's stupid. Put it on the floor. My little, yeah. my little one-inch cone sub <laughs> is on the fucking floor. I know it's not much, <laughs> but it's not on my desk because that's stupid. I mean, it's also mainly there because I don't have the room. But yeah, he's got a he's got a little weather station, I guess, here, which is what. He was saying he's got in the bottom of here, but I'm a kidding. weather station. Yeah, that's what I think that he, that's what he said on the description. See if you go down here, uh, lighting detector and weather station server. So I'm assuming that this fucking thing here on his desk has the weather, and that's the server for it. I'm assuming. And those are going to be like more accurate or quicker than your phone. <laughs> fucking idea i don't know guy yeah like man, i imagine those that shit's got to put out like it, that's got to take away jobs man like the those weather apps well i mean weather i mean who needs that weatherman anymore <laughs> well the weatherman is the only job you can have where you're wrong every day and still have a job yeah so, but uh so out of these two as nice and as minimalistic as this thing is, because it's minimalistic, but it's, it's decked out with shit. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, this guy's got more room. So, I, I, I like this little cabinet here, which he doesn't even show what's in it. I, I, you know, he has room for other stuff. And, like, you know, the other guy only shows this little corner. You know, it's I don't know. I yeah. Uh, I let me see. What kind of monitor is that one again? Uh, this is just a like a forty something inch uh, TV with a couple little uh, whatever he had lying around. He says. Yeah. See, I like that one. Yeah, it's got character. I mean, this one is kind of cool. It looks like a, an Apple commercial. <laughs> The right. only thing is, he's got a few too many knickknacks. I mean, I guess he he must do like music for a living, I guess. But there's no fucking guitars or anything. I mean, you know, what the hell, dude? I don't, <laughs> you can't. Yeah. Get, everything's so sterile. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you know, whatever. I mean, I like both. I mean, I I wouldn't, you know, kick this place out. <laughs> Right. But uh that's just me. So uh I don't I don't I mean I, I don't know. I I'd take either one. <laughs> um so are we is it time for the news yet, Mr. Ian? Yeah, did you wanna uh you can read all of ours this time? Oh goody. Okay. Uh did you did you wanna keep it on yours during the news or what, what do you wanna do? I guess on your I screen? better, huh? I mean, uh, might as well. I'll, I'll just remind you after the news. Switch it back. Remind you, here's the news. Okay, what story did you want to start with, sir? Um, I don't know. What do you got open? Uh, everything. Okay. Uh. Okay, I'll start off. You with can start off with the. the <laughs> that's fine. Microsoft says this Chinese gaming service company is hacking Xbox accounts. 
Since 2015, a Chinese gaming website has been hacking Xbox accounts and selling the proceeds on the open market, according to a complaint filed by Microsoft in federal court of, on Friday. On its website, IGSKY uh, presents itself as a gaming service company offering players a way to pay for in-game credits and rare items. Well, according to Microsoft, many of those credits were coming from someone else's wallet. The complaint alleges that the company made nearly $2 million in purchases through hacked accounts and their associated credit cards using purchases as a way to launder the resulting cash. On the site, cheap in-game points are also available for FIFA games, Forza Horizon 3, Grand Theft Auto 5, and Pokemon Go, among others. <laughs> Microsoft is committed to providing uh, cons customers with safe and secure online experiences, a uh, company spokesperson told The Verge. We filed these lawsuits to protect our Xbox customers from uh, the illegal trafficking of stolen property. Wow. Yeah. They're based in China. Oh, boy, that's going to be hard. <laughs> but, you know, if anyone can sue yeah. them, it's fucking Microsoft. Right. They can, they can afford to go after China. They'll, they'll get the whole country. <laughs> yes. It's probably some little kid in China. That's always how it is, isn't it? Yeah, either that or somebody in actually Switzerland who's fucking running it through China. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of people say, like, that's, like, Microsoft is unhackable because pretty much, you know, you, you get what you pay for usually that since you didn't have to pay for Back in the day, you didn't have to pay for the PSN, and they said that's why it was hacked more because they didn't, there wasn't enough money going into it or whatever. Uh -huh. But it just goes to show you that even if you you pay for a really secure service like the Xbox Live, you can they can still be hacked, you know. Yeah, I mean we we had stories before about people shit being stolen and customer service says and yeah. Of course, that was mostly PlayStation. Okay. Yeah, it seems like Microsoft is being less of a dick about it, though. Well, they got it. We'll say they got to protect their name because if too much shit happens, they'll say fucking Microsoft. And you know, I mean, when like the server went down, you know, even Snoop was getting on saying, "Man, y'all gotta get your shit fixed. Or I'm gonna switch over to PlayStation." Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's not a not a new thing, but our our science our. Uh, are our terrible genetic privacy laws hurting science? <clears throat> As companies like 23andMe and Ancestry.com help make uh, genetic testing commonplace, you would think that uh, we would become better at ensuring protections for the privacy of that data. Instead, multiple congressional actions threaten to erode already weak uh, protections against genetic discrimination. But it's not just a dystopian a future where citizens are discriminated against based on their genes that we need to be worried about. One researcher is concerned that our inadequate genetic privacy laws will stymie science. It's inhibiting both the clinical care and research, Robert Green, a medical geneticist at Harvard Medical School, told Gizmodo. Uh, Green's work focuses on how genomic medicine impacts people's health and behavior. One thing he's particularly interested in is what makes people inclined to say yes to genetic test, to a genetic test. And he's observed one particularly big reason why people seem to be saying no. Fear is a genetic discrimination. For Green and other geneticists, that makes their work harder to do. Research to, say, track how a particular gene affects a certain condition requires thousands of people to undergo uh, genome sequencing, and the harder it is to attract these numbers, the longer it takes to do the work. Ultimately, this could mean treatments taking more time to get to patients. But fears of genetic discrimination could also impact the health of those patients directly if they refuse testing that could help doctors treat them. People are concerned that if they find they're carrying a risky gene and it goes into their medical record, it will have a bad impact in some way, Green said, which they should be. In 2008, Congress passed the Genetic Information and Non-Discrimination Act, or GINA, to prohibit health insurers and employers from either requiring genetic testing or using it in uh, making decisions about things like deductibles. The protections of GINA already do not apply to life insurance, long-term care, 
or disability insurance, meaning that those companies are free to ask for genetic information and reject people deemed too risky. The Affordable Care Act, now in the midst of being replaced, solved another problem with GINA, protecting against discrimination for pre-existing conditions re revealed uh, via genetic tests. Another bill, H.R. 1313, currently under review in the House, would allow employers to request that employees undergo gen genetic testing with the risk of paying hefty fines if they refuse. We're injecting terrible opportunities for discrimination into the workplace, Green said. Green has just started looking at how this impacts healthcare and research outcomes. In one project, early data suggests the impact may be significant. As part of a major NIH-funded study looking at how genetic sequencing of infants impact healthcare, Green and his colleagues offered the parents of more than 2,500 newborns free genetic sequencing for their child. Of those, parents of 325 newborns agreed to attend an information session. Only 57 wound up participating. Yeah, those studies are actually fucking hard. Uh, I, I I see uh, all the time them, you know, where I work, they always come up with a, you know, uh, whatever you know patients needed for a study or a survey, and you know, every week that shit goes out because there's some new thing they need testing, and you know, they won't they're yeah. not gonna be able to find you know. If they can't if they can't get the people in there to turn in the you know, the DNA, it's just it's not going to happen. I mean, that's just how numbers work. Yeah, you think? I hope it, it never comes to a point where it's like, oh yeah, you you got bad genes, you suck, you're gonna die. I mean, that's the that's the main fear is that's going to end up a dystopian like that movie Gattaca, where you know, oh, you're predetermined for failure, so sorry, uh, um, and then eventually. You know, yeah. you're going to be discriminated upon, you know, for your future problems. Um, I mean, like, that's why so many people are afraid to get insurance and to go to doctors and do shit to keep themselves alive. Because, you know, right. if, if they know you have a pre-existing addition, you could lose your coverage. And, you know, they act like that's not a real thing. And, you know, the Congress and the Senate and all that, they got to take that shit serious because... This is people's, you know, livelihood. That you know, insurance is is a bare, you know, necessity. You gotta have health care. You can't not have it. Yeah. I mean, if I what? can't go, if I can't go to my doctor for my pain, for my gout, I can't go to work because I am in pain. Right. Uh, they, they don't just give me inflammation, you know, anti-inflammatory pills because I'm not feeling good. You know, I. I'm not a I'm not a junkie going to a doctor with the shake saying, "Come on, give me some pain pills." You know, I'm taking the equivalent of ibuprofen, you know, in large amounts a day, and that's neither one is really safe. But you know, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna do anything. If I took regular ibuprofen all day, it, it it's not gonna do a damn bit compared to what the stuff I'm on now. So yeah, I'm just I'm just scared that it's gonna end up being like, you know, like the it's gonna be like what happened with like Hitler or something, and then we're just gonna have like, have you heard of that term eugenics? Yes. Yeah, it's we're gonna have like gen, eugenics with your genetics, you know. It's uh. They're gonna try to filter out people that have anything wrong with them, you know. Yeah, they're gonna they're well, they're trying to breed a superhuman, and that's the that's, you know, it'll be a lot easier now than it would have been eighty years ago. Yeah. So basically, I think the point of this article, though, was that it, you, you got to, we uh, need to put it, yeah, watch the news, and we got to try to put in good laws to protect this type of call stuff, your you know? Congressman, call your senator, do all that shit, because it, they work for you at the end of the day. Uh, yeah. I mean, at the beginning of it, it sounds like, don't waste your money on the junk science, but then they're talking about, oh, by the way, your, your health care, they don't, you know, it might be fucked. So that's interesting. Uh, no. Then we got here data reportedly. Uh, Microsoft reportedly wants to use DNA for cloud data storage. Yep. Uh, in the not so distant future, <laughs> Mr. Sanctuary 3000 callback. I love it. <laughs> Next time you want to back up your uh, work to Microsoft's cloud, you might be storing it on a few snippets of DNA. 
I, we knew this was coming. This has been like a story I keep bringing every couple of months. Wait a minute. Uh, Are you telling me my porn is going to be backed up on actual porn material? <laughs> uh, yes, it's a, it's a petri dish of sperm. Yeah. yeah. Over the past six years, scientists have turned to the double helix in hopes that it might one day become a more efficient storage medium for things beside hair and eye color. In 2011, Harvard University, again with the Harvard University, Genesis Georgia Church pioneered the idea, encoding his own book, some images, and a JavaScript program into the mo molecules. Last July, a team from Microsoft and University of Washington managed to store a record 200 megabytes ooh, of data in DNA. And this year, yeah. researchers encoded DNA with a 1895 French film, a computer virus, and a $50 Amazon gift card. Now Microsoft is hoping to take the technology uh, commercial. The company told the MIT uh, Technology Review that it plans to have operational storage uh, system based on DNA up and running inside a data center by the end of the decade. The company declined a, a request by Gizmodo for more details, obviously. But Microsoft research uh, architect Doug uh, Carmine uh, told the Tech Review that the eventual uh, device would be the size of a large 1970s era Xerox copier. He also said the company plans to brand it as your storage with DNA. Within three years, they plan to have a proto-commercial system at one data center storing data for at least a boutique application. Uh, DNA as a storage medium takes, makes a lot of sense. Just think of all the information that your DNA stores in a teeny tiny amount of space. It is compact and durable and is unlikely to ever go obsolete. And it works a lot like the hardware we use to store things on array with code written in A's, G's, C's, and T's rather than ones and zeros. But there are some major hurdles to overcome before the technology breaks into the mainstream. For one, DNA sequencing is getting cheaper by the day, but still far too expensive to replace your flash drives. This year, Illumina announced plans to bring the cost of sequencing entire human genome sequencing down to $100 within a decade. How much that cost drops and how quickly uh, will pay a large part in how uh, quickly DNA uh, data storage is adopted. Microsoft's announcement signals uh, an interest in making those advancements happen as quickly as possible. As the technology of tomorrow commands an increasing amount of storage space and computing power, this, this will tell whether we're uploading our files to strange genetic code in five years, but stranger things have happened. So, yep. I mean, like they said, we're going to run out of space. My, my story last week about, you know, companies storing their shit, you know, and having to deliver it by the truckload. If you think in terms when the 1950s computers would take up an entire gymnasium and now it's, you know, your phone is more powerful. It's only a matter of time until they go, you know what, we just got this little thing we... Poke a, poke a needle in it. Oh, now your DNA's got the entire uh, library of Congress in it. And, you know. Yeah. That's, so instead of truckloads of hard drive, it's going to be truckloads of cum? Is that what you're saying? Uh, there it goes again. Okay, next story before he makes this one very too. Florida GOP <laughs> consultant admits he worked with uh, Gusefa 2.0 analyzing hacked data. Oh, boy. Yep, there's a political one for you. Hold on, I got to yawn. Sorry, it's not your fault, it's late. A Florida GOP campaign consultant who runs a blog under a pseudonym uh, directly contacted the hackers behind the breach of the DNC and the Democratic Conditional Campaign Committee, and he solicited material from them. The Wall Street Journal reports that Aaron Nevins set up a Dropbox account specifically for Lucifer 2.0 to drop files into, and he received 2.5 gigabytes of data from the Democratic Party breaches, including the get-out-the-vote strategy for congressional candidates in Florida. Nevins analyzed the data and posted his analysis on his blog, hellofla.com. Lucifer 2.0 sent a link, to the, a link to the blog to Trump backer Roger Stone, who told the paper he was also in communication with the hackers. Nevins told the journal that the hackers didn't understand what they had until he explained the data's value. Some of the most valuable data, Nevins said, was the Democratic Party's voter turnout models. Basically, if this was a war, this is the map 
to where all the troops are deployed. Nevins told the person or persons behind the Lucifer 2.0 account via Twitter. He also told them this is probably worth millions of dollars. Lucifer uh, 2.0 responded via direct message. Hmm. Okay, you owe me a million? Smiley face. The DNC breach has been attributed by a variety of means to attackers tied to Russian intelligence, specifically to Russia's GRU, the country's foreign intelligence organization. Nevins told the journal he didn't believe that, but he said that it, it didn't matter who Guccifer 2.0 was because if your interests aligned, never shut any doors in politics. Uh, Wall Street Journal know that it's impossible to know whether the leaked data played a factor in any of the Florida races. One former campaign consultant told the paper he did suggest adjusting voter targets based on leaked data, but representatives of the GOP in Florida declined to comment. Oh, boy. <laughs> yep. I'll, I'll let you go first, sir. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you go first, man? <laughs> I... I... <sighs> I agree with uh, uh, John Oliver that this has all the markings and tel t telltale signs of Watergate, albeit stupider, so it's stupid Watergate. Um, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I I try not to get too much in the politics on the show, but, like... <laughs> The president said, hey, Russia, please hack the election, and then he gets elected. What the fuck did they yeah. think was going to happen? I'm sorry. So. Oh, boy. Okay, moving on. Uh, but it's probably a good thing Ben wasn't on for that one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, throw back to the 1990s. NTFS bug lets anyone hang or crash Windows 7 8.1. Oh, boy. Some more good news. Those of you with long memories might remember one of the more amusing, or perhaps annoying, bugs of the Windows 95 and 98 era. Certain specially crafted file names could make the operating system crash. Malicious users could use this to attack other people's machines by using one of the special file names as an image source. The browser would try to access the bad file, and Windows would promptly fall over. It turns out that Windows 7 and 8.1, Windows Vista, but that's out of uh, support anyway, have a similar kind of bug. They can be taken advantage of in the same kind of way. Certain bad file names make the system lock up or occasionally crash with blue screens of death, and malicious web pages uh, can embed those file names by using them as image sources. If you visit such a page in any browser, your PC will hang shortly after you and possibly crash outright. The Windows 90s era bug was due to an error in the way the ad operating system uh, handled special file names. Windows has a number of file names that are special because they don't correspond to any actual file. Instead, they represent hardware devices. These special file names can be accessed from any location in the file system, even though they don't exist on disk. While any of these special file names could would have worked, the most common one used to crash old Windows machines was CON, a special file name that represents a physical console, the keyboard for input, and the screen for output. Windows uh, correctly handled uh, simple items to access the con device, but a file name included two references to the special device. For example, C colon slash con slash con, then Windows would uh, crash. And that file was referenced from a web page, for example, by trying to load an image from file colon slash 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 c colon slash con slash con then the machine would crash whenever the malicious page was accessed the new book which fortunately doesn't appear to afflict windows 10 uses another special file name this time uh around the file the special file name of choice is dollar sign mft is the name given to one of the special metadata files that are used by Windows NTFS uh, file system. The file exists in the root directory of each NTFS volume, but the NTFS driver handles it in specific ways and it's hidden from view and inaccessible to most software. Attempts to open the file are normally blocked, but in a move 
reminiscent of the Windows 90s flaw, and the file name, if the file name is used uh, as if it were a directory name, for example, trying to open the file C colon slash dollar sign MF slash one, two, three, then the NTFS driver takes out a hook on the file and never releases it. Every subsequent operation sits around waiting for the lock to be released forever. This blocks any and all other attempts to access the file system, and so every program will start to hang, rendering the machine unusable until it is rebooted. As was the case nearly 20 years ago, web pages that use the bad file name in, for example, an image source will provoke the bug and make the machine stop responding. Depending on what the machine is doing concurrently, uh, it will sometimes blue screen. Either way, you're going to need to reboot it to recover. Some browsers will block attempts to access these uh, local resources, but Internet Explorer, for example, will merely <laughs> try to... I thought it was called Edge now. Well, yeah. I guess in the old version. The new version is Edge for 8. I guess it's still... It, uh, will merely try to access the bad file. A good go on Microsoft. We couldn't immediately cause uh, the same thing to occur remotely, for example, by sending IIS a request for a bad file name. Uh, but it wouldn't immediately surprise us if, if certain configurations or trickery were enough to cause the same problem. Microsoft has been informed, but at the time of production has not told us when or if the problem will be patched. Uh, they're trying to phase out 8 and uh, 7, so uh, this might be coming from inside the house, man. What do you think of that, Ian? <laughs> That's the tip for I have for you, man. I mean, uh, yeah. 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 Well, that... That uh, that just makes me think like when we were, I, I forgot to mention when we were talking about that WannaCry ransomware, uh, it encrypts all your files on your hard drive at least, and uh, like I imagine it would be fine. Like if you don't care about the data, then you could just obviously reformat it. But I remember uh, when Barnacles was talking about it, I watched one of his videos on it. He says, he, you know, he was talking about like if you try to look up any fixes on it, they're all like scams or whatever. That'll probably make your computer worse. But he said pretty much when your uh, your computer gets it, it's, it's, it's done for Just throw out your computer. And I'm like, what? Just throw uh, out your computer. Well, I mean, maybe. I mean, at, like, even if you're hard drive is fucked that what like why would you throw away your whole computer <laughs> well you know? i mean if it's it, it depends if you have multiple hard drives and it affects them all i don't know uh yeah I, i'm not sure about that like i i think the virus just infects like your c drive so um, i would i would still make like it's just a good lesson for everybody to make extra backups of shit i mean this is 2017 you should be yeah, making get, a couple different kind of backups actually you know right well i mean you can get you know either paid backups or like uh you know certain guys are doing like a google drive and amazon cloud uh, yeah i tried to do a uh, backup uh remotely with um what's that uh website where you upload it um uh not chrome it sounds like a i can't fucking remember now but there was it was a company that uh did backups uh what the hell is the name of that company uh carbonite that's it oh uh, yeah I howard stern that. would be uh advertising that all the time on his show well like I, I i was i tried it but the thing is i didn't have high speed i had a you know how it's a standard well i had bro <sighs> excuse me I had broadband at the time, but you know, uh, plus I had my old, I you know, iMac, which wasn't the fastest machine to begin with. So like, I try to back stuff up, and it's like, this will take all night. Yeah. So. Well, but uh, yeah, make sure you back up your shit. I mean, they say the I, best is to have a redundancy yeah. and a backup offsite. Yeah. Well, like I think it's like three different kinds, at least like yeah, like an offsite, then like your. Like and maybe an external hard drive, and then like your internal or whatever. Right. But uh, I, I'm currently like I have a bunch of music. I have the 
I had like there was like a promotion with my one four terabyte external hard drive that I got that was like it was like two years of one drive for free. So I just been listening to my music I have on there. Uh and it actually streams pretty smoothly with this, so I like I don't know, uh I still have a lot of space of that. Like I was thinking about putting my work on and maybe just like after the two years is up, maybe I'll look in to see how much they're charging for it per year, you know? Mm -hmm. It's something good to have extra. Like, I just don't think people should have to depend on the cloud. It's just, this is something that should be extra, I guess, you know? Well, you know, you could, I mean, like they say, uh, a lot of those life hacker articles and stuff are like, you know, take an old computer and turn it into your personal cloud, you know, just yeah. buy a butt, butt ton of hard, hard drives. Cause you know, you got to keep, you, you're in charge of keeping your shit safe at the end of the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, but you really got to build two systems. And that's why it makes more sense to just have a gaming rig. Because a gaming rig is going to be beefy anyway. And then you don't have to buy your games, you know, twice. You already have to buy an expensive Xbox. And then you got to buy an expensive computer. And then you got to buy the backup. Or you just buy a nice expensive computer with some backup and some fucking games. <laughs> yeah. P.S. Did you see the uh, uh, they have Friday the Thirteenth? The game is out now. No, I didn't see that. It I, that sounds I interesting. Was following it uh, before it was launched, uh, it's a uh, it's uh, right now it's on Steam for forty bucks, but uh, eventually there's going to be some DLC because you could play as like different versions of Jason. Oh yeah, and, yeah, and like the one where he's got the uh, sack on his head, and like different uh, suits. I guess you could eventually their plan was to have DLC to get different suits. I don't know if it was like a Kickstarter idea or what, but I was like, I saw the thing. I was like, I want to get this I want it right now. Oh my god! <laughs> but I'll wait. I'll yeah. wait a little while. Either wait till it's on sale or till it might go down some. Yeah, this is so cool here. Uh, so I was going to ask about this. So this pretty much they're saying like, it's not going to be like the wanna cry where like your hard drive is like messed up. Uh, it, it just like, it's fine after you reboot it, reboot it then. Yeah. After I reboot it. Reboot it. I saw an interview. This guy said he had his kids reading, reading them uh, off his cards. And they're like, when they were trying to say, so what it was like when you made your debut, but you know, seven year olds don't know the word debut. They go, so what was it like when you made your debut? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, my debut? It was fun. <laughs> it's the butt. So is this your last story? I, I don't remember. Uh, I don't know. I I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. So well, what? I have, how many do you got here, sir? I got like six, but they're not really in-depth articles. They're like, hey, check this out. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, here we go. Verizon. Let's do it. Hold on. First, I'll let you see this, this thing. It's a box that says Verizon. Verizon may have just made the world's most pointless thing. Somewhere, <laughs> or someone, somewhere, deep in the bowels of Verizon's marketing department, has apparently read a study saying that the Internet of Things is going to be the next iPhone. This noble brand crusader decided that Verizon should be a thought leader in this category and directed the captive team of engineers to make a product that demonstrates Verizon's commitment to the Internet of Things. But unfortunately, no one stopped along the way to think about whether this is a thing that anyone will want to buy. It's called the Smart Hub, and it's a 4G LTE modem that turns Verizon's wireless network into a local Wi-Fi network. Verizon positions it as a router for the smart home, which means it's supposed to connect all your nests and your hue bulbs and smart salt shakers to the internet so they can send you endless push notifications. The smart hub will do that. But you know what else can do that just fine? Your home Wi-Fi network, which comes in over a cable and is probably faster, more reliable, and far cheaper per gigabyte than Verizon's LTE solution. Sure, there are definitely people out there who don't have a fixed line broadband connection. Depending on the year, about 65 to 7 percent of all homes have a broadband connection. But I'm willing to make a purely speculative bet that 99.9 percent .9 of people who have a $200 Wi-Fi connected thermostat 
also have a, have a home broadband connection. Statistically speaking, most people who don't have home broadband are either poor, in which case they can't afford smart home gadgets, renters who are moving frequently, who aren't allowed to install smart home gadgets, or old, in which case they won't understand why they why their thermostat now needs a nap. <laughs> there, will well, time, well, there will be time in the future after millimeter wave 5G becomes uh, common and wireless internet becomes cheap, when you might want to replace your fixed line broadband with a wireless service. But that day is not today, and no person with a smart home setup is going to run it off an expensive, capacity-limited wireless connection. Verizon did not return a request to explain who the hell the smart hub is for. So, yeah. yeah. If if you if you really think about it, I mean, like, why would you why would you pay for all, all that data when it adds up to just as much as getting your broadband, anyways? You know. Well, like, I mean, just data alone. This is that's got to be retarded expensive. Yeah. So, did, no. Did you hear about what T-Mobile was trying to do? Like, with they had some, I forget what it was called. I, I didn't add it in the news, but uh, it was, like, something where uh, phone numbers can be, like. You mean crazy gonna, to turn that T-Mobile deal? No, what like, they were trying to do it where, like, all, like, your phone numbers could be accessible through, like, all the apps or whatever. Yeah. Didn't hear about that. I yeah. have, I'm sorry, I had T-Mobile, and. They never credited me back money that I actually paid when I canceled my account, so fuck them. I want money. I want your money. <laughs> Check this out. This is groovy. Wood frame motorcycle runs on algae oil, man. That's fuck. That's, uh... Wood motorcycle built wow, by man. Resort man, uh... Runs on oil made from microalgae. Two years ago... Maker Ritzer Mans embarked on a nature-inspired motorbike building adventure that would result in a wood-framed beach racer fueled by microalgae oil supplied by Peter Muige. Still work in progress, much of the bike is fashioned from wood, including the frame, handlebars, and swing arms. The challenge for me w was with every part of the bike to look to what nature could provide me, Mans told New Atlas. Like cork from the damper and hemp spring uh, for some reinforcement. With all my designs, it should spark my imagination. The bike's frame and seat are made from steam-bent birch with hemp fiber reinforced boundings for the two-point uh, heat set, glued together using plain old wood glue. That's a single-sided swing arm to the front made from birch and oak with an oil uh, cork slash oak damper as a and a cork insert to provide a compression zone in the spring attached it to this is a spoked non-wood uh 23 inch wheel with drum brake so yeah that i mean look at this thing it's crazy <coughs> 500 I've... cubic inch single uh cylinder fuel engine wow i just so, foresee yeah. a lot of splinters with that well, the seat's not all. I mean, the seat's. Uh, I mean, you don't you don't sit and hold the bike. You hold the handlebars and the seat, and it's kind of a crotch rocket. So you're not even really sitting on. The, you're like bent over. No, I mean like when the shit like uh, cracks apart on them, you get get in an accident. <laughs> I mean, if you get in an accident, you're fucked anyway. I mean, I don't know what you can really do with it. I mean, next up, uh, a bike made of recycled shit. Right. I mean, it looks cool, though. I mean, so they call it a crotch rocket because you're bent over with your fucking ass in the air. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I just, I, I don't know. Like, I tend to not like too much of the trends that go on with like the green stuff. Like, what? Like, I'd like to see like a Lambo style car with that, you know, that's like energy efficient and stuff, and is healthy yeah. for the environment versus like they have like weird designs and stuff with that shit all the time well, you know i'm more interested in the fact that it runs on fucking micro you know algae oil right like, that that if you you know because originally the whole thing with going green was you get a diesel engine 
which burns cleaner than gasoline, and you run it on vegetable oil. And this is very similar. So that's you know. yeah, that's that's good. That, and it's probably better than you know, like having to what was it like that biodiesel shit where you, they had the it would take like you'd pretty much decimate fields of corn just to make the shit, you know. Yeah. Google launches animation tools so you can turn boring data into cool gifs. What? Google wants to be the Giphy for turning boring data into awesome animated illustrations. Sort of. The search engine China announced it has launched a handy animation tool that essentially lets you turn tedious number charts into slightly more entertaining GIF, GIF or GIF illustrations. I'll say GIF because it's... It's fucking GIF. You, you can hear it better when I talk. But the so-called uh, data GIF maker practically allows users to set their desired parameters and effortlessly transform them into data visuals. Google Data Editor Simon Rogers says the company built the app to make it easier for journalists to rely on data when telling stories, but virtually anyone can benefit from using the tool. While the Google Data team says it's typically resourced to the GIF maker for visually com uh, competing search interest, Rogers explained the tool uh, leaves opportunities for a much wider application, including representing polling numbers, sales figures, and movie ratings, and so on. My, my imagination is that, like, people will use this when they're making videos of fucking movie reviews and yeah. see the shit all over YouTube. <laughs> I mean, if only the maker of fucking Notepad knew how much YouTube would have people just making a shit ton of videos. It's like how-to videos and then all you... <laughs> yeah. So that's, you know, this would be, this is just, I figured this would be cool. If Ben was going to come on, I figured it'd be up his alley. Yeah, I was going to ask, did he, is he on date night again then? Uh, no, he's still in Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that is that where that girl was? Yeah, he's at the quick draw screening. Oh, okay. So, what about Doug? Did you try to invite him? I sent him an invite, but, you know, we'll see. Well, check this out. I didn't. I I just saw this within my article. IKEA adds Google Home and Amazon Alexa support to its smart light bulbs. Nice. That's cool. That's cool because we got an IKEA opening soon in Columbus. They said that like it's going to be so crazy when it opens. There are two. Uh, there's an on ramp and an off ramp at the exit that the store is at, and they said that they're going to basically close it the day the fucking store opens because they said there's going to be so many people. That you have to get off miles before and drive on the streets instead of the highway. So. Akakakia. Yeah. I was just thinking of that Chia Pet when I hear that. Sorry. <laughs> Net neutrality. Dead people signing SEC consolation or consultation. Re repeat that again. Net neutrality. Dead people, quote unquote, signing SEC consultation. A campaign huh. group has complained to the U.S. Federal Communications Commission over its refusal to erase fake comments by a consultation on net neutrality, or from a consultation on net neutrality. Fight for the Future's complaint is signed by 14 people who say uh, their details were used without permission to file anti-net neutrality views. The campaign group says that some of the comments were uh, posted using the names and details of dead people. The FCC has voted two to one to reverse net neutrality laws enacted in 2015. The vote was the first stage in the process of repealing the legislation designed to force internet service providers to treat all data traffic as equal. Americans now have until the middle of August to comment on the proposals. Questionable comments. Almost 2.8 million comments have been filed on the FCC's plan since the consultation opened at the end of April. Last week, it was reported that hundreds of thousands of comments supporting the proposal had been posted by bots. After the FCC vote on 18th of May, Chairman Ajit Pai told reporters there was a tension between having an open access, an open process where it was easy to comment and preventing questionable comments from being filed. But the regulator 
erred on the side of openness. But Fight for the Future claims that many of the suspected spam comments have been posted using genuine details that have been stolen. In their letter to the FCC, the group has called for an investigation into the fake comments and for the regulatory to notify all those whose details have been used to post them. Whoever is behind this stole our names and addresses, publicly exposed our private information without our permission, and used our identities to file a political statement we did not sign on to, the letter reads. So, hmm. yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That's BBC it, right here. Wow. So, it's, it, shit's getting real, son. <laughs> um, so, basically, in a nutshell, what happened? Okay, well, to, to see what everyone thinks, uh, the FCC put up their proposals online and allowed people to comment on them. They say that some of the comments were not provided by the actual people because it's just like uh, when you uh, sign a petition, you have to give your name and address. Uh, yeah. Well, they're saying the credentials used to verify who this person was leaving this comment were stolen information from dead people. Uh, so yeah, and the guy what the you said the guy wanted it to be open, you know? Yeah, so he aired on the side of open being open. Yeah, it's fucked up. <clears throat> I don't know if it's what way it's going to swing, but if there's bullshit going on, there's bullshit going on. I just I don't see it, the future for the FCC being pretty good, or I I don't see it being good at all. You know. Not for a while. Not until uh, the head's taken out. It's like a bad zit. So, uh, <laughs> check this out. Microsoft rebrands Twitch competitor as Mixer. Since its inception, Microsoft's live mm. streaming platform was known as Bean. That changes today with the team behind the platform announcing a name change to Mixer. According to Mixer co-founder and en engineering lead uh, Matt Salmon D., uh, the name change was a difficult but necessary decision to make. If Mixer is to succeed on a global scale, why the name change? It was a tough decision and not one that we uh, made lightly, but it was something that we decided on as a team. We believe so much in the power of the platform and want to grow it in every uh, major market w around the world. Unfortunately, that wasn't something we could do with the Beam name. I don't know why. Apart from the name change, Mixer also uh, announced several features that will make their way to the platform soon. The headliner being co-streaming. The feature allows as many as four people to broadcast their streams together as one shares one screen view. This would allow folks to watch League of Legends and Overwatch matches with multiple viewpoints, except the streamers do not need uh, to play the same game. They can do different things while their streams are simultaneously broadcast. Mixer also mentions two features that distinguish it from the likes of YouTube and Twitch, interactive streaming and low latency. Interactive streaming allows people to affect gameplay for titles that support the feature. With recent Telltale games, titles like The Walking Dead, A New Frontier, and Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, a Telltale series having incorporated a crowd play feature. As for low latency, uh, Mixer advertises its one second latency, which compares to the 10 to 20 seconds of latency on competing servers or services. Whether such features will win over folks that already use the YouTube and Twitch, uh, uh, use YouTube and Twitch remains to be seen, but at least Mixer can say it is trying. Mixer's co-streaming feature is available today for all, C all PC users and insiders of Xbox One. The service also released a Mixer Create mobile app for Android that supports self-broadcasting and will eventually include the ability to stream mobile games. For comparison, the current Mixer mobile app only allows for, st for stream watching. Hmm. I've never heard of Bean before. I did, but everyone ignored it because if, if you weren't playing on... Hey, if you play on Xbox, you can stream to Beam. Well, what about Twitch and YouTube? No, Beam! I mean, well, fuck that. Like when you, you know, when you get a Windows computer and it only comes with uh, uh, Edge and it comes with Bing... Fuck yeah. That. No, I want to use mine. And they're trying to they're trying to, you know, get you to do it. <clears throat> I understand the mixer because they're trying to say, hey, you can play with your friends and all that, but 
and Microsoft will do anything. It, if they're really pushing you, like they, you know, they got call it that whole, ins- you know, like they made the Xbox an OK button to install Windows 10. You know, I mean, they'll go they'll go past the line if they want to. You know. Okay, now we got my last story in the evening. Former Mozilla CTO, Chrome One, responding to Firefox marketing head Eric Petit's uh, blog post from earlier this week, Andreas Gall, former chief uh, technology officer of Mozilla, who spent seven years in the company, offers his insights. Signing latest market share figures, uh, Gall says, it's uh, safe to say that Chrome is eating the browser market and everyone else except Safari is getting obliterated from his blog post edited and condensed for length. With a CEO transition about three years ago, there was a major strategic shift at Mozilla to refocus efforts on Firefox and thus the desktop. Prior to 2014, Mozilla heavily invested in building a mobile OS to compete with Android, Firefox OS. I started the Firefox OS project and brought it to scale. While we made quite a splash and sold several million devices, in the end, we were a bit too late and we didn't manage to catch up with Android's explosive growth. Mozilla's strategic uh, rationale for building Firefox OS was often misunderstood. Mozilla's uh, founding mission was to build the web by building a browser. Browsers are a commodity product. They are pretty much uh, look the same and feel the same. All browsers uh, work pretty well and being slightly faster or using slightly less memory is unlikely to sway users. If even Eric, who heads Mozilla's marketing team, uses Chrome every day as he mentioned in the first sentence, it's not surprising that almost 65% of desktop users are doing the same. I don't think there will be a new browser war where Firefox or some other competitor recaptures market share from Chrome. It's like launching a new and improved horse in the year 2017. We all drive cars now. Some people still use horses, and there is value to horses, but technology has moved on when it comes to transportation. Does this mean Google owns the web if they own Chrome? No, absolutely not. Browsers are what the web looked like in the first decades of the Internet. Mobile uh, uh, disrupted the web, but the web embraced mobile, and at the heart of most apps beats a lot of JavaScript and HTTPS and uh, RST those days. The future web will... Look yet again completely different. Much will survive, and some parts of it will uh, get disrupted. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. You know, I, I I don't know. Like, I mean, it, that usually uh, OS is made by browsers don't really work work out too well. Like with Chrome, you know. <laughs> Uh, that didn't that didn't do too good the Chromebooks did they? Um, I mean, people. If you're wanting a, a small device that can you know just do email and shit like that, it's you know it's like a bigger and it's like a big Android tablet. Yeah. I mean. Well, I mean, I use Firefox, and I, I'm not too sure about how well that's going to go. You know. Well, I mean, like they said, Safari and Firefox are pretty much it because Safari is what you get with the Mac unless you get something else. And, you know, uh, Edge is just a joke. Nobody uses fucking Edge. You know, I I wonder if Cody would, since they made a whole Cody OS, I wonder if they'd ever make a browser. Uh, I don't know. It'd be interesting to at least see. Well, there's always plugins like for a while, like remember when like the Wii they had the internet browser app, and then it started to suck. And it the one the default one was run by Opera, which that was a fucking joke. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, this is the last uh, story I had. So, hmm. well, me. what do you what what are your opinions on it though? Like, do you think um, it'll go good? Well, I think you got to look at where they're coming from. The two bigger companies, Chrome is Google, Safari is Apple. It's really going to come down to a damn two-party system, just like the government. Yeah. The two powerhouses, 
Firefox can't afford to compete because people are putting ad blocker on it and they're not paying for shit. And yeah. Chrome, if you got an Android device with Chrome on it or Chromebook, it's because you just want something you know that come. It could come with it. You're, uh, I don't want to say you're not that smart, but same with a, 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 a an Apple device. You get it, you download it, what's what it comes with, and you're, you know, you use it as it's intended because you're not a tinkerer, right? And Firefox was the first to have add-ons, right? Yeah, but you know, then it just what? became bloatware pretty much. Well, it just sucks because. It's... You know now they're getting rid. They got to get rid of the add-ons or whatever. Remember? Well, the the old ones, the way the code they were in was not supported anymore. The extensions, they call them, I think, right? I don't know what they do for Firefox anymore. I know with the uh, Chrome, it's extensions. I know that, but I oh no, it was the plugins. I'm sorry, the 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 old plugins. Because yeah. Fi- Firefox does extensions and it does plugins, and the, it's like. Every time I installed something for Firefox, I was like, is it either in the plugins or in the extensions? I don't know. Right. You got to hunt so, around for it. Right. There are so many options anymore. You know, it, uh, when it all comes down to it, you got the two powerhouses, and then you got the little scrappy guy on the side. Yeah. You know, but... Uh, By the way, you could switch your screen off now if you wanted then. I'll just switch it back and forth. Okay. Um. But, yeah, I mean, those are pretty interesting articles. Um, I, th- I would like to think that me, both me and you are getting a lot better at uh, choosing, like, interesting articles because, like, I, I catch myself always trying to, f- like, I'm thinking about, like, this article sounds interesting, but it's not really that, doesn't really catch my eye, you know? So, like, I try, I'm always trying to, like, filter myself with this stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. And... I think me and you pick out pretty good interesting articles that because we've always been about trying to find ones that spark debates and conversation, you know? Right. It's either a a pet project for one of us where we figure the other guy's going to go ape shit or we got something (laughs) we think Doug's going to go off on. Yeah. um, Or just tinfoil hat where we could speculate. (laughs) Yeah, we love the tinfoil hat ones, you know? What's the internet without the tinfoil hat, man? <laughs> right. That shit, so. But, yeah. Oh, I'll bet. It's one puffy. They, I know they, they, they won my attention all night. They want, they like playing with the laser pointer outside. Really? Dogs usually don't. It's usually cats. Oh, they love it. They, they run around the whole yard with it, you know? Our yeah. dog, uh, our big dog, we got him a ball. We finally oh, found one that won't destroy. Sorry, go ahead. We finally found a ball that our dog won't destroy, so we got him, and now he won't stop playing with it. Yeah. But, you know. But, uh, so I think we've had a good show tonight. Um, yeah, I think so. It's been pretty packed with things. The, and stuff. The, the show of things. Not the Internet of Things, the show of things. Yes. Although we did talk about an article about Internet of Things with the uh, Wi-Fi saw shakers, which I did see that somewhere yeah. recently. Uh, uh, what the hell does it do? Tell you to order more salt? I don't... Yeah. I don't know. Although I'd, I'd have to ask, would you ever get those, like, the play balls with the, the Bluetooth speakers in them? Oh. Yeah, why not? I would, uh, I would, I would like to get the kind that are. Uh, I would like to at least get the bulbs that are controlled by your phone. Yeah. Because uh, uh, the you, hue bulbs. Well, you can get cheapies. Uh, yeah, the knockoffs. LED uh, light bulb uh, app. There's a hue, and then there's like a generic one. Uh, it's like ten bucks. Yeah. Hell, Best Buy smells smart bulb, small bulbs now? Wow, really? Okay, you can get Hue bulbs at Best Buy. You can get them for $15. That's not bad. Or you can, yeah. buy, a, you can buy a Hue white and color ambient starter kit for $199. No thanks. Oh, shit. 
they they even have ones that have microphones in them too. Yeah, well, like you said, they got the um, a speaker. Um, Why not just put all of them in? Light speaker, <laughs> microphone. Well, I will put. Uh, you ever watch Unbox Therapy? You're talking about the projector light bulb. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's throw that in there that's, too, then. Because <laughs> then all you gotta do is point it at a wall, and you're watching a fucking movie. Yeah. That, that's interesting. I I did see that. It. I mean. They got add-ons for your phone where you can turn your phone into a projector, you know? Type smart and put space and it said light bulbs? Shit. Google knows what I'm looking for already. Uh, let me see. Oh, $9. Wireless RGB dimming LED bulb for eight seventy nine. dollars can You can use the Alexa with that, too. Like, you, you, like, turn the living room light bulb into red. Oh, wait a minute. 2.59 cents from eBay. Probably China shit here, but let's see. I was just set off everybody's thing. Hey, Alexa. Hey, Siri. Hey, Cortana. Wah, 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 wah. Ha, ha. Joke's on you. I got headphones on. <laughs> Did you see that new Alexa thing? I was forgot to ask Nate if he ended up getting it, but Alexa, you can do the make the calls through Alexa now, and it's, like, always, like, the lights flashing green instead of the regular blue? Uh, no. I didn't know that. Yeah. Make calls with the Alexa now. I guess it goes through the speakerphone somehow, I guess. Let's see, 4 volt. Oh, man, I need, uh, 27. 27 watt? Is that it? I don't know how bright that is. Eh, it's not that bright. Fuck that. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I was just trying to find it on there. I saw a bunch on uh, YouTube where they're, the guy gets it, and he's like, for $9, you control this with your phone, and you put a bunch of them in your house, and they're connected talking to each other. I think that's yeah. cool because not only could you control your LEDs with a remote, you can use your phone to turn you know the lights in the room on a different set. That's cool. Yeah, well, that's, that's why I got that. I'm putting the Wi-Fi module in for my LED strips inside the computer case. I still have to test that out with my phone oh, and no, shit. Your 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 jury rigged Molex. <laughs> oh snap! You're gonna burn your house down, dog. No, man. I tested it on my on my one of the XP machines, and it works pretty good. It looks like. Okay. So, and my okay. my soldering skills are pretty good now. <laughs> but the only thing that that sucks about those the Bluetooth light bulbs is that they're all only just like stereo. Because I think it would be cool if you could if you could each have like a different channel for each light bulb. Then you could do like a surround sound with your light bulbs. Then oh, hold on a second. Here you go. Hold on, let me screen share. Here you go. No, don't show the screen share the dick. Yeah. LED RGB 12 color bulb. Bluetooth control smart music audio speaker lamp. Nice. 12 different colors. Ooh, it's got a remote. And it probably doesn't fucking work. <laughs> you know what I've seen? Uh... I haven't bought anything on eBay in a while now, and you know what I've seen them start doing? What? They'll have a product. There'll be like a... Stop. There'll be like um. how uh, Amazon does it. There'll be a product, and then they'll have a ranking next to it with reviews, which usually you have to go into each seller's like feedback and then see if someone else bought the same item. This one just says, fucking wasn't the right thing. Don't buy it. Didn't work with my phone. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's cool. Hopefully the shit works. But uh anyway, it's getting late as hell. Um you probably gotta let the dogs out. I gotta get a refill on my beverage. And yeah, don't you have to let the dog out too? I got yeah, I gotta do that and put them to bed because if I don't keep keep putting them to bed the normal time, uh when it's bedtime during the week, the big one barks and cries that he doesn't want to be in his crate. Right. In your crate, because you're 
If not, his nose will wake me up in the middle of the night. Hey, 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 get, go to bed. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Well, I guess let me know if you got it, uh, if you're feeling motivated this weekend with any streams or if you got any music done. I'm uh, I, I'm tinkering. Uh, my problem, my problem is, I always think everything I got is shit. <laughs> I, I my uh, my writer's block is like uh, uh, Johnny Resnick from the Goo Goo Dolls. He said, "You have a writer's block, you write. It's just you think everything sucks." So, All right. But you know, well, um, I'll, uh, I'll keep you in touch, man. If I uh, get anything, I'll share. I'm a sharer. Yeah. By the way, I'm gonna. I got to start putting on the the uh, MP3 links at least for each show soon because I I don't have all the episodes converted into MP3 yet, but I I do have like what is it like? Uh, oh man, MP3 is dead. It's got to be ACC now. <laughs> you I do have, have. You don't have our show in Flack. No. God damn it! <laughs> you might as well just throw them all away now. Yeah. It's fucking worthless well i have a i made a public uh folder on the google drive that has the audio clips and the uh shows so i was gonna uh, i'm gonna send you a link for that but uh, i'd like to start putting at least some kind of audio format for, in the description of our show so uh, uh okay. people could download it it and then you could like if you want the clips and stuff, you could download those too. If you ever get that voice meter to work, yeah, I'll, I'll get on that. <laughs> you know, get on some guitar too for the intro. Oh yeah, guitar. Yeah, I have the outro guitar. I will. I actually started dicking around with my phone since I had a bunch of Google points. Like I do surveys, I had like eighteen dollars in Google credits. And I was playing with my uh, app that lets me play keyboard and guitar on my phone. And it's like, hey, want to get rid of the ads? It's a dollar. I go, yes. I got rid of my ads for a dollar, so now I have the full version. I made tracks. It was kind of cool. Like, I made a bass track and a keyboard track. Oh, yeah, that's cool. But uh, the thing is, I had to do each one separately. I think I did. Uh, right. <clears throat> you can make multiple tracks at the same time, just like on a computer, but on your fucking phone. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, so it's something I was doing during my lunch break. I made a little bass beat, and then I put some chords over it. Yeah. It's time to go back. <laughs> Once I figured out how to fucking do it. All right, well, on behalf of uh, everyone who couldn't make it tonight, and Ian and myself, we'll uh, catch you on the flip side. Yeah, also, I'd want to say th thanks, Frank, for a uh, great show, and I really appreciate what, uh, what you help out and do for the show, too. Oh, likewise, my man. Uh, sorry, I've been kind of lax on the uh, stuff. I've just oh, been it's okay, man. so fucking tired. I understand, man. Oh, well. But I, I just was thinking about it because you've, you've helped me do this show. We're already up to 41. and Already? We've, we've been doing this for almost a year now. Oh, really? Well, 52 weeks. We've skipped a couple weeks, too, and each, there's only 52 weeks in a year so well hate to tell you on episode 100 we have to make out <laughs> think of the views man <laughs> we get uh, notice that youtube's like you owe us views now <laughs> all right well on behalf of uh everybody wait until doug comes on right after i hit stop broadcast <laughs> we'll catch you on the other side Boop. shout out soko Boops. Later. Meow. 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 Okay. Later. <laughs> Boobs. <laughs>